Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome to my 2023 Christmas home tour. Oh, this is one of my favorite videos every single year. A, because you get to see more of the house than just a specific project or room. But B, because I just love Christmas. Who doesn't love Christmas? I think especially the last couple years since 2020, everybody who was previously too much Christmas is now like no longer scorned, but welcomed because we just all need a little more joy in our lives. So this year, while I typically do a big Christmas, don't get me wrong, I went from <laughs> just some of my Christmas to like every single Christmas thing I own. Normally when I go through my boxes, I'm like, okay, I'll do like these couple things and I'll leave the rest for next year so that I don't have the same things out every single year, but I kind of rotate through. This year I was like, I'm putting it all up. Every single thing I have for Christmas and the kitchen, the dining room, the living room, and my bedroom, although I don't know that we'll get to the bedroom today because it's not quite uh, company appropriate. But let's go ahead and start in the kitchen. I will bring y'all in closer, but I did my mercury glass trees on my island, which is always like, as soon as I was buying this house, I knew I wanted all the mercury glass trees on the island. This is one of my absolute favorite things about this house is that I have an island big enough to decorate, to use, and to sit at without having to clear it off in between. I can prep things on this side. I still sit on that side for lunch when it's just me or me and whoever for the day. And I don't have to undecorate my table. I can leave my table decorated 90% of the time. So I really enjoy that. I'm gonna bring y'all in closer so you can really get the full effect. So in the kitchen, the island is definitely the star of the show, even if it isn't the whole show. I have my little army of trees, my little houses, these sweet little gnomes that I've made out of resin. I have my little resin Christmas trees that I made. It just makes me very happy. And then over the stove, I have my little wreath. Now this is a gingerbread resin ornament, not ornament, a wreath that I made last year, kind of styled after that anthropology wreath that was very popular. It turned out so cute, you guys. Each of these little gingerbread houses was made of resin and then the trees, the bottle brush trees. And then right below that is my newest sign for the year, fresh cut Christmas tree farm, pine, spruce, fir, cedar, cut and carry. And it has that cheetah print Christmas tree in the resin. It is so cute. I'm not gonna make any cooking safety recommendations. When I use my stove, I move that sign just in case it's not safe there. But I I cook 90% of my meals in my Ninja Foodie, so I like it there. I'm gonna leave it unless I'm actively using my stove and then I'll move it, easy peasy. But from there, the kitchen doesn't have too much else. I have, of course, my bows on my windows, which looked a lot cleaner before this video. I just washed those windows. I have these sweet little Christmas present balls. I don't even know what to call them, but I kind of put out on my scale. And of course, my Christmas amaryllis that is actually growing. This is the first time I've ever done amaryllis, so we will see how it works. I love it. I still have back here my little snow globes so i made these last year and they are fake snow and my little resin trees i have them just scattered all about the kitchen and they're so cute a few christmas trees and then of course things like look at these i just picked these up they're little mittens and they're silicone so i can use them in my foodie I loved them and they were just the right color. So I picked them up and then my mom wanted some. So I got her some for her stocking, but don't tell her. 
got my little dishcloths. Nothing exciting, just like those. And then, bitty bitty, on this side of the island, I decided to put my little gnomes. So when I'm over here cooking, I have a little secret gnome friend. Honestly, as much as I love these gnomes, I never quite know where to put them. They're one of those things I just don't have like super great spot for. But from the back, I think they almost just look like more mercury glass trees. So I put them on the back here and they kind of blend into the forest while being a fun little thing for me while I'm cooking. Let's go ahead, leave the gnomes in the forest and head to the dining room. I think my Christmas table is my favorite one of all to set every single year. I love my plates. I'm going to use these every year. I don't care. I'm probably never going to replace them. I'll never say never, knock on wood, but these are a beautiful, they're Fitz and Floyd, the classic choice winter holiday Santa portrait collection. And I just love the sweet Santa and his pink coat and the little fawn and the animals and it has the sea foam and the pink. So, you know, one day if I outgrow the pink and green and I change my site completely, then yeah, then may I, I may change. But for now, they're pretty much the perfect plates for me. Then I have my gingerbread. You can see the full table. I have a full tablescape that you can go see exactly how I set it. It is Similar to last year, I used the same centerpiece and the same salad plates. Like I said, I'm going to use those every year. But I switched out everything else for a slightly more gingerbread look this year. I wanted to use these really fun coppery, um, I don't want to say rose gold because they're really more copper brown poinsettia uh, chargers that I found, place nuts. They're really sweet and I think they kind of pull in the gingerbread of the house a little bit more than the more uh, white and pink tablescape I did last year. But I'll leave both tablescapes down below. You can go check them both out. Either way, after we did all the copper, I did my nativity on my pie safe, which is always a sweet moment for me. I love, nativities have a special place in my heart. My dad bought my mom one piece of her Linux nativity every single year growing up. She has a beautiful white porcelain and gold uh, Linux nativity. It, she has all the pieces. He bought her so many. He was down to buying her like an extra goat. <laughs> what else do you get? So she has literally, it covers her entire sideboard. And I'm like, that is one of the few things that I'm like, I eventually want that. But that will be a hard day for me because I love my nativity so much. So I'm going to bring y'all in to see it and then we'll head to the living room because from here you can see my secretary with my fun little winter gnomes. And I love that that little secretary with my gnomes, it ends up being my gnome spot. I literally just switched those gnomes out. They're ones I make. You can, I'll link them below. It's my catchphrase today. Um, but I just switch them out for every season. So the winter ones go into my Valentine's Day ones, they go into my Easter ones, they go into my summer ones. I've just, I've ended up making gnomes for every season because I love them and they all go there with different signs or displays and it's just a fun little easy moment. But getting ahead of ourselves, sideboard, then gnomes. Behind the tablescape, is my nativity so this is a fun uh i don't even know to me he really looks like that yadro style of figurines of course they're not real yadros but we've got mary jesus and joseph we've got four angels including two baby cherubs and i just think they're so sweet and i actually found these at one two all the angels came in a set and then of course mary jesus and joseph came in a set at two separate antique shops and i was like i cannot believe i found these on the same day and that they go together and they were great prices so you know we'll keep adding to them but for now they live in my little tree forest which i think helps mary the kitchen 
and the dining room together into one big space because it really is a big space. Sugar, what are you doing, baby? Just sitting in the sun? Those windows put this big splotch of sunlight right here and 90% of the time, that's where you can find one of my dogs. Yeah. All right, on to the gnomes. Gnomes. So I have this little baby bed that I use for a prop for some of my dogs. I take pictures of puppies. And I just filled it with gnomes because I was like, I didn't know what to do with it. I got to find a better place to put it than in my entryway. But real star of the show here, these gnomes, these gnomes. I'm telling you, I love this spot. So this year I decided to marry the gnomes with some more of my snow globes. So again, these are just fake snow and resin Christmas trees. Got my little holiday gnomes, the bows, and the little glittery noses. We've got the snowflake gnome. Got the antler gnome. All tied together with my sign. Reindeer are better than people. Which is probably true. I'm fairly sure dogs are, so reindeer probably are too. And I just... Again, I just think it's so much fun. And I love that you could see it in every single tablescape video. But you know what else you could see from here? My entire living room. Because we're in the living room. So oh. I love having two trees in here. I know it's a little extra. I don't care. I enjoy it. I sit right on the couch in the evenings. And I could see each tree on either side of the TV. And I just really enjoy that. So you can see my little vignette here. These are all <laughs> signs that I've made with my Cricut or resin, including my letters to Santa mailbox with the little resin Santa's nice list cards. My North Pole. I painted over this, but apparently uh, it shows up really good on camera. Same with this. I painted, painted both of those things before this video and you cannot tell. Just pretend. Give me the benefit of the doubt because your girl did it. I promise. I'd not lie to you. And my sweet little have yourself a merry little Christmas basket. From here we have my cruise Christmas tree. So this tree I do a little different every year, not intentionally, but I just haven't found how I really like to decorate it yet. And this year I decided to put my cruise ornaments on it. I customized the tree collar. I made a tree topper. You can see all my pretty cruise ornaments. And there is an entire video on this tree, so you can go check that out. But my big tree, my Mary's Angels tree is the same as last year because I just, I just love it. I just love it. And I'm just not going to change it every single year. I'm not that girl. So if you want to check out this full tree, you can go check it out from last year. I'll link that video down below. It just makes me very happy and isn't that the goal I think it is from the Christmas tree we have my stockings that I always hang on my big white bookshelf and I changed out almost all of my pictures this year to signs that I've made I normally switch out maybe one or two especially on this little shelf but this year I just wanted them all up so we have my magic button sign, which is super cute. One of my friends wanted this. I'd never heard of the magic button before for one of her kids. It is a little button that you can make. Mine is out of resin. Of course, all the buttons on that sign are out of resin. And leave under a tree for a child to find. And it's supposed to be a button that has fallen off of Santa's coat. So the little quote says, I've lost my special button. It's magical and round. It may be in your chimney or has fallen on the ground. 
So if you find it, keep it safe and leave it out next year. I'll bring a special, I'll bring a special present to fill you full of cheer. And it's signed Santa Claus. I thought that was really cute. And so instead of just making the button, I also wanted to make the sign so that you can actually um, leave the button for your kiddo to find and then hang it up and display it if you like. I know some people also like to just put a ribbon on the button and hang it on the Christmas tree as an ornament, which I also thought was super cute. Then we have my newest sign. So this one and the Christmas tree one over the stove are the two I made this year. I always make a sign for Christmas. It's something about Christmas that just makes me sign happy. But this one is, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads, because I found this mold for a nutcracker and I love the nutcracker. If you didn't know, I danced ballet from the time I was two to the time I started cheering in high school. Um, I was a very, very, very shy child. And one of my pediatricians told my mom, like, you gotta get this kid in an activity or she is not gonna be ready for school. She is too shy. So I love to dance. My mom put me in dance and I danced the nutcracker several times over the years, obviously. Not as anyone important, but I was in the Little Sugar Plum uh, chorus several times with my little tutu. I even have one of my dogs, Sugar. Come here, Shiggy. She's she's walking right behind you. Come here. You just saw her. She was sitting in that sunbeam. That is Sugar, and her registered name is Princess Sugar Plum Fairy. Because she's extra, like me. So I just thought that was cute. We have my Merry Christmas resin sign. That was one of my very first resin projects and it still looks fabulous. My home for the holidays Christmas truck. I made that back when I was staying at my mom's house like six years ago. It still looks great. And my newest gather sign, which was actually part of my Cricut Jumpstart Summit that I took part in this December. I will leave the links down below, but it's me and 27 other classes, presenters, all teaching you how to use your Cricut and specifically Cricut Design Space. If this is before, I'm not sure when this video is going out. If this video is before the summit, you're free to, you're welcome to join us for free during the week. If it's after the summit, you can purchase a VIP pass to go back and watch all of the classes, including mine. I will teach you how to make this sign out of basswood and resin. If you don't want to take the class, you can just enjoy the sign. <laughs> and that is it. That is my entire tour for the holidays. I love how it turned out. I know it always drives me a little nuts to have this space empty, like these masks need to come up. But I don't like to put new holes in this wall. This shiplap is actually really sturdy hardwood. It's hard to nail into. So I simply use the nail hooks that were here before and I don't move these. So I think next year I need to make like a skinny sign, or maybe a garland or a swag, something to fill in that gap. Either way, thank you so much for hanging out with me this year for my 2023 Christmas home tour. I wish I could have each and every one of you over for a big holiday meal and we could sit around the tree, but of course that's not possible. So this is a fun way to bring y'all in. We just love that sun and share my home with all of you. I hope you have a fabulous holiday with your family and I will see you in the new year. Bye.